Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is United International College, and I'm Professor Ken. I'm Carolina. And we're here at the uh, summer 2022 uh, United International College Student Art Ex Exhibition. And um, we're actually honored and graced by her presence, Professor uh, Aya or Elizabeth. Well, we can we call her Liz here in the building, right? Is that yes, her? that's right. And um, she's helping us uh, understand how she was able to not only inspire the students here, but also to uh, help guide them and and show them some of the some of the things that they need to do. Let me just fix your mic. Okay. All right, coming to closer to the mic. Perfect. We want to we want to hear everything you have to say. So, <laughs> so um, so we had a few questions, Carolina. Why don't you you start with uh, a couple of our um, tough questions for the professor? Okay, um, at the beginning. So, um, where are you from? You born here or? I was born in Cuba, but oh. I was mostly raised here. And oh, nice. So I'm pretty Americanized. So, um, what did you major? What did you? I my major was arts, and then I got my master's in art education, both from the University of Florida. Wow. Oh. So, you, I guess obviously um, you're a professor here, so you you know how to instruct people to take their minds. I mean, my mind is all over the place. I don't know if you could do that for me, but just to take <laughs> them and help them be a little creative. So, tell us about that process. I mean, because the students they really didn't know how to draw when they first started, right? I'm assuming they they come to you and it's day one. So I take your class, day one. What do you? I'm like, all right, I could draw, but how do I go from there? How do you do that? You know, day one, we do a diagnostic. Yeah. I just have to see what their observational abilities are. Everybody can draw a cartoon because we're basically copying from some other media. But I want to see that you can draw something that's right in front of you instead of from your imagination mm -hmm. or from a picture. So we start with some kind of diagnostic. Usually I'll have some objects in front of them, basically any material objects in front um, of us in the, in the classroom. And then I'll also have them do a quick portrait of a student as well. You mean someone sitting across from them or something? Correct. Like that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you keep speaking. I'm going to do one of you. <laughs> as we start working here. We'll see how we do. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. Thank you for that pose. But, you know, to go back to um, one thing that you said earlier, I mean, everybody draws when you're younger because right. that's how we communicate. Long before we start to, uh, well, we start to speak earlier, but long before we start to read and to write, we use drawing as a means to communicate something. Mm. For example, my two-year-old outside, you know, he'll see me drawing and he'll just grab my materials and want to do the same thing I'm doing. And it's mostly just scribbles, but it's his way of saying, you know, mom, I can do it too. Oh, right. That the problem sense. is that as we grow older, we start learning shame. And shame is unfortunate because we start questioning things that we enjoyed as children. Mm. So something that all of us learned to do naturally pick up a crayon drag a line across a piece of paper and just enjoy the process right we start questioning because other people might be like mm, i don't know about that maybe not mm -hmm. you haven't been on tiktok lately right because there's a lot of people <laughs> on tiktok that have no shame that's all i could tell you so. well no. <laughs> that's another matter it is another matter that's true but in teaching adults and even adolescents as i teach high school yeah um one of the main things that I have to overcome is that sense of shame and that sense of like low self-esteem because other people have mm -hmm. said you're not good enough or because they have told themselves you're not good enough. That's Drawing is a skill just like learning a language. It just requires practice. Yeah. And one other thing that you have to overcome, just like if you were learning a language, if I'm trying to speak with a fluent speaker of French because I'd be like, I don't know if I'm saying it right. And then, of course, I'm thinking I have an accent. But I have to overcome that sense of shame and just just practice. Yeah. That, until I actually start seeing any real progress. Yeah, I guess that that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So there's hope for me yet, is what you're saying. There's, it, right. That's the thing. That's not about hope. It's like you learn, you know how to do it. You just forgot that you can. Uh, true. So why is you make the they work in portraits? In self-portrait, yes. Well, I know I wanted him to do a, a self-portrait sometime during the end because the diagnostic drawing that they did in the beginning was a portrait as well. And I wanted them to see their progress in the last eight weeks. And it's a very short time, but if, and I wish I had brought those sketches with me, but if you see where they started to where they are now, you're like, wow, seriously, this was eight weeks. 
And it's not me patting myself on the back necessarily. It's just, it's a testament to the fact that they really tried very hard. Yeah. And the work I, I saw is there are, uh, the exhibition is called uh, Faces. Why Faces? Well, we wanted to do like a metaphor. Faces, like obviously you and me. Um, but I also uh, said phases like PH because it's kind of like phases of their work. Like I wanted them to see, you know, you started at your phase one was you were doubtful. Your left brain mentality was saying, this is not right. I'm not doing it right. right. I need to start over. And now they overcame it and they're in a certain, a different phase of their lives where they realize, oh, look what happens when I tell my left brain to hush and I can focus on my you know, my own creative juices. Yeah, I think, and, and uh, we had uh, a couple of the students in here already and they explained that process and they talked about some exercise that you made people do, like drawing a horse upside down or something <laughs> like that. Why would I want to draw a horse upside down? <laughs> what purpose is that? I don't get it. Well, I, I have to give credit where credit is due. That's not mine. That's an exercise um, by, uh, it comes from a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, which mm -hmm. is really great. And uh, the whole idea is to trick your left brain because our left brain is taking over and wants to say, Liz, you have chores to do. Liz, you have to pay the electricity. Liz, it's very like, like uh, adult oriented. Yeah. It's very down to business. Yeah. Your right brain is trying to take over, but the left side is, is badgering it. Wow. That's how I see it. Um, so the, the fact that you're drawing something upside down it's, it's you're kind of tricking that left side of your brain because your right brain has to focus on just the lines and how they start forming shapes as you start dragging and elongating them and connecting them. Mm. And your left side of the brain is like, this is upside down. You need to start over. And if we do, then I'm going to be more concerned with, well, the horse's head doesn't look proportionate or well, the neck is too short or what have you, right. but it's upside down. So I'm not necessarily thinking about those things like it, having to be so accurate i'm just focusing on the actual line yeah you're free to be creative and all that so mm -hmm. but I, the magic is and i'm sorry to yeah, interrupt you no, the no. magic is when they turn it upside down and then they realize oh wow like it actually came out it pretty came decent out. yeah you that's know? great i mean that that was explained to us that way and i think that's incredible to be able to do that and visualize that so that's a neat exercise yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And I You're think you, it, it worked because the way we hear Marta and Aline and all that you say is that they feel when they make their draw, they feel the Aline told us about the that you say the brain, and he he learned how to control the part that he that they say him no that is no that is not good that is mm -hmm. it's good and Marta told us about the how when she made the self-portrait, how she tried to express the emotions. And she explained about his eyes, something interesting that, that she said she, she was very proud of her that she made. And all this thing to you because you, yeah. you teach her how to do that. Let me tell you, Marta's drawings can like belong on a museum. <laughs> I know. So but... I don't know if necess she's necessarily the best example because she was always like, she was always like the star student, you know, in terms of like drawing ability. But um, for example, another student, um, I don't know if you got to interview him, Luciano. He's mm -hmm. hilarious. <laughs> you guys, we'll, you sit we'll down talk to him soon enough. Yes. But when he started out, he was, um, he wasn't doing so great. He really, struggled with just telling that side of his brain to hush so he can focus on tapping into his right side brain and one part of that is because he comes from a scientific background he's mm. a doctor mm. in his native country but when we were doing perspective drawings which are far more technical and that's actually something i struggle with just because they're so technical and i'm not necessarily as free as i would with a portrait right. but he really shown like he he, he did these sketches and I'm like, you just drew me a whole Ikea kitchen, you know? And he was telling me that was one of the ones that he really enjoyed. And it's really funny how, you know, you'll compare someone like Marta who uh, has a graphic design background. So she's mm -hmm. more creative already. Um, and she'll say, oh, I didn't like the perspective drawing so much. So I think um, one of the things that really struck struck out to me is the fact that like, they're coming from totally different backgrounds and 
what I thought might be difficult to them wasn't necessarily. Yeah. Like Luciano, for example, he just he showed me the perspective drawing. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. what? Why have you been holding out on me? Well, and I, and I think you know, um, as a professor, I get satisfaction, which you probably do too, of seeing someone come into their own and, and do things. And you know, from my interpretation of what you're explaining to me and what we've talked about the students first, you have a very good way of um, pulling out that special something of somebody in that that art context, which is great. And maybe we all have different specialties. Like, you know, I probably couldn't draw a, a, a profile, but I could probably draw a pretty good technical piece too. So there's, we all have these specialties, but it takes a person like yourself to be able to open up their mind and be free a little bit. And then to come out with that process with the guidance and things like that. So we want to thank you for giving us some time before we, um, before we close it out. What would you like to say to um, fellow students or to anyone who comes to the college about the experience, about you know understanding the art world and expressing yourself and all that? Well, I don't know about understanding the art world because that would require a whole podcast. A whole podcast. No, we'll, we'll book you back another <laughs> hour. Come back. But um, I mean, honestly, I just um, would want them to remember what it was like as children to just grab a crayon just tap into your inner three-year-old and just drag it across the paper and just remember how fun it is just to just just to make something just yeah. to make a mark and um not necessarily to focus too much on what the final product is but just more so the process and just relish in it yeah. especially since we you know as adults we have so many other responsibilities and the fact that there's very little time in our day to actually go and sit down and make something makes it even more special when you do get the time, even if it's just a little, you know, scribble on a, on a post-it note. That, that's good. That's good advice. So I'm, I'm probably halfway there because my wife says I'm <laughs> childish all the time. So <laughs> that probably helps. Well, thank you very much for spending some time with us. It's a wonderful exhibit. Thank you. And um, there are, there are just incredible pieces of work out there. So, uh, someone gets this done in in eight weeks, and um, I know I read I read the background about embracing the beauty of, of mistakes and not burdening yourself, like you said, by self doubt and just mm -hmm. expressing that. So I appreciate that. So thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, Professor Liz, for for being here and explain all that I want I want to know about the why you make the thank the you. phrase phrases <laughs> for the for the exhibition. Yes, now we got to go grab a pack of crayons because I want to start drawing again. That's I like, yeah, I like to draw. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. See, that was that was easy. <laughs> <laughs>